With the weight reduction chamber now in the wood blank, I'm going to trim off all the excess so that I can then use the router to actually flush trim everything to my template. So as you can see, I've roughly cut out around the line, uh, making sure not to go over. Uh, you want to leave you know, somewhere between a 16th, 8th, quarter of an inch, doesn't matter. Um, but you want to leave some wiggle room so that when you put your template on, um, you can make sure everything aligns properly and that the router bit can go around and actually clean up and smooth out the edges. See, even though the, the blade that I'm using does a fantastic job, I mean, you still kind of have these bandsaw uh, accordion type marks. And so um, this won't be here after um, I uh, route the edges. Um, but I can say the body is considerably lighter without all that extra weight on it. Um, it feels great. You know, before I was worried it was going to be a little too heavy. Um, now I'm sure it's going to be just fine. I temporarily attached the template uh, to the cherry body. Um, using the CA glue and, um, and masking tape trick. And so now what I'm going to do is take my half inch uh, white side flush trim bit um, and trim off all of the excess here. Now it may seem like I'm doing this backwards by trimming the body, then gluing the top on and trimming it again. But what I'm really looking for here is to make sure I have a perfect cut for the body. Then when I glue the top on, I can trim the top to what the body is and, you know, then they'll both be flush to one another, um, and then I can sand out the curves and make sure those two pieces fit together the right way. If I were to glue this first and try and do it, there could be uh, situations where if I didn't glue properly, there could be little, um, little seams in the side where there's not enough glue, and I'm going to try and avoid that, and, and this is one way that I can do it.
so as you can see, that bit does an amazing job uh, following the pattern and, and, and doing a nice clean cut. Uh, I'm not going to lie though, um, it's absolutely scary using a bit like that. Um, that's a half inch bit. A, um, I've got it running a little bit slower, um, but man, when it catches the wood, you know, it, it definitely makes you notice. And so now I'm going to pop the template off. I'm going to be able to cut the maple top on the bandsaw, and then I'll glue the two together. Uh, and that'll be it for tonight as I wait for the glue to dry overnight. Now I'm going to cut out my uh, maple piece to roughly the, the proper shape. And then I can glue it to the body. Um, the important thing here is just to cut enough off so that when I clamp it down, uh, I'm fairly close to the edges and make sure I can line things up. plenty close enough uh, so that I can now glue this uh, to the cherry so I can have one solid uh, body piece. As you see, I could have been a bit cleaner with how I did my glue, but it's actually not a big deal. I'd rather have glue spilling off the sides um, than not have enough glue, which unfortunately happened in a few areas you can see maybe um that the glue didn't go on top now this is sort of that old adage that there's never enough clamps um you know i bought four more clamps i used eight i believe and it still wasn't enough um so i guess i need to keep going out and buy clamps until i get it right but uh this shouldn't have any functional issue uh, i'm going to be putting binding on this anyway so the the seam between the maple and the cherry uh, should be covered up by the binding um, and so it's not a big deal so what i'll do now is uh trim the maple off around the the cherry body uh, and then i'll go to the orbital sander and smooth out the sides and all the glue will disappear um, we left with nothing but a uh, clean routed body So I have the same router bit that I had yesterday to do my patterning. In this case, I'm just going to use the outside here. Now, as I mentioned, there's some glue that's going around. And so it's likely the case that there'll be slight rippling as I go around and do the, the pattern trimming. But again, I'm not really worried about that because I'm going to use the oscillating spindle sander to sand the curves in, make sure everything is all set. And at that point, um, the maple and the cherry will get you know, perfectly in line with each other.
So now you can see we've got a pretty, pretty close outline here. Um, nothing that can't be cleaned up with uh, the spindle sander. The one difficult thing here is I really underestimated um, how much the glue would actually matter um, for the router bit. You can actually see um, a couple times uh, the router bit actually caught this as I was trying to uh, ease the piece in. So that's a good learn, uh, learning for next time that uh, I really do need to actually be a little bit more careful with my gluing. Um, and there's a couple areas here you can see now um, where the glue doesn't exactly meet the top. It's perfectly stable in terms of you know squeezing down on it. Uh, it's not going to affect the guitar. And again, I'm going to be covering that with binding anyway. But just uh, something to keep in mind uh, for beginners like me. Um, you know, definitely need more clamps. Uh, even when you think you have too many, uh, it's not enough. And then also be careful with the router bits. Uh, that half inch does an amazing job, but boy, is it scary. Now I'm over at my spindle sander. Um, what I'm going to do is put a bigger drum on so that I can go ahead and um, smooth out the curves that are on the edge here. Um, I'll start out with 60 or 80 grit. I'm not sure which one I have. Go through, sand off all the glue, um, get it mostly smooth, and then I'll increase the grits. Um, to you know, kind of smooth out the sides and get everything nice and cleaned up. There's definitely a romantic notion to using hand tools and being a, an artisan, you know, working by candlelight. Uh, but the oscillating spindle sander has got to be one of my favorite tools to just fix uh, any of the errors or, or mistakes that I have. Uh, as you can see now, you know, this is super smooth. This is only at 80 grit. I could go through and refine it some more. But we've gotten rid of all the glue gotten rid of all of the uh, marks from the router bit and now just have a, a really nice looking um, body. And so what I'll probably do is, is go over this with some higher grit, um, just make sure everything is refined the way I want to. Uh, and then I'll probably start routing out the, the tops and drilling the holes.